Hello and welcome to Adobe InDesign file menus video. I'm not going to have any transitions or anything today. We're just going to jump right into the video. Um, we're just going to talk about this bad boy way up here on your screen, either if you're using a Mac or a PC. Um, file menus are what you're going to use about 50% of the time along with your tools the other 50% of the time. That's how I use my, use my tools and menus most of the time but um, you can also remember some keyboard shortcuts. So without any further ado, let's get started. So to find your preferences, to change any preferences you need on the Mac, you simply go to the application icon, go to preferences and choose what you're looking for. Um, um, the main thing I might show you is how to change the color of the interface. I mean, that's kind of cool. Um, if you don't like black or you don't like white or something, but this is where you go to change the color. I thought that was cool and interesting. I thought I'd show you how to choose that. I'm going to choose dark because I, I tend to like the black and white contrast. Um, I thought that was cool. So I'm going to leave it. So there we go. That's how you change one setting. Um, the other settings are for you to explore if you need to do that. File menu. I've shown you how to create a new document. By now you should know the keyboard shortcut Command N or Control N on Windows. That's how you create a new document and then you can go through the, the options there and choose what you need. Open, another one you should know, Command O, Control O. Browse and Bridge, you can browse and bridge. Bridge is a organizational tool you would use to organize your photos, maybe your documents. I don't know, I don't really use Bridge, but um, bridge comes with Photoshop so um, yeah open recent you can open any recent document within I don't know I don't know what this list opens but yeah there's a list of recently opened documents and you can just quickly open it from there close to close a current document window without quitting InDesign entirely uh, command W or Control W on Windows, save you should know, Command S, Control S on Windows, save as, to so save as a different document, Shift Command S or Control uh, Shift S on Windows, save a copy, I believe that is Option Command S and Alt Control S on Windows. Search Adobe Stock, that's where you can find some stock photos on Adobe's uh, Adobe Stock website um, for placing their stock photos uh, for a design or something. I don't know. Don't really use it. Place. I should have shown you place by now. To place an object. Command D. Control D on Windows. If you have the Adobe Creative Cloud account, which you should, because with Adobe InDesign Creative Cloud, um, they have a subscription plan thing, so you should have a um, an account. Um, you can place from your library directly. Import XML. I don't know what that is. I'm not going to even try. Um, Adobe PDF presets is where you can set your presets for your PDFs. Export. You can export your InDesign document to a PDF or some other file format. You can publish this online. I don't know where. Probably somewhere magical. I hope somewhere, somewhere magical. Um, publish online dashboard. I have no idea what that is. Document presets. You can set document presets for your document. Um, you can even create new ones like so. It's like this one. It tells me uh, the intent of this document is to be printed. Number of pages one, start page one, facing pages yes, master frames no. It tells me the page width and height in pi uh, picas and points and the pixels per inch is 72. Columns one, gutter one, pica margins and blah blah blah. You can add a new preset if you want to. Go ahead, go new, and you can do this for every document. You can change the intent quite quickly. Moving on. Document setup. This is where if you made a boo-boo with your document and you need to change it from print to web, go ahead, go to print, go to web. You can change whatever you need to. Maybe you need to change from pixels to this type of pixels or something. I don't know. Um, you can really change it, so I'm not going to actually change it though. Um, user file info package. 
package is a very important one if you're going to be using the same file on a different computer. Package allows you to take everything in your document, including your font library that you've been using, you know, the fonts that are actually used in your document actually. Like let's say you downloaded some weird font on the internet and the other computer you're going to be using it on does not have that font available. This is where package comes into play. You just click it and it'll just take everything and package it into an InDesign package and you'll be able to open it up on any computer anywhere and continue working on your document. So summary, here's fonts, it'll link, it'll save your images and everything, color links, print settings and everything else um, will be packaged into that as well. And then of course print command P or control P on Windows. Edit, let's move on to the edit. Undo, command Z, redo, command shift Z, cut, command X, copy, control C, paste, command V, paste without formatting, command shift V, paste into control command V, paste into place, control shift command V, clear, backspace, or delete. Duplicate, step and repeat, place and link, all these, I mean, these top one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, these nine right here, you should know by now from like Microsoft Word or just in general because those are the basic commands you should know on the keyboard. Um, edit with, so if you have a photo and you select it in your document, this menu will uh, pop open and you can edit in Photoshop or any other, um, program that you use. That's that's what they edit with, or you can even edit the original if you wanted to. Um, find and change, so like let's say you have lots of body type in your document and you need to find a few words and change them. That's where you go for that. Spelling. Always check your spelling, especially in an uh, important design that's going to be published. Um, always check your spelling. Command I. And then if you wanted to, you can make new keyboard shortcuts or create new keyboard shortcuts for certain things. Um, I really don't do that, so I'm not going to show it, but you can, including with menus. Menus, like, let's say you use the file menu all the time, and and you just want it to be red. You can change the color of it and select OK. Now when I go to file, look at it. Look at it. It is red. That's cool. I don't know why you would do it. Maybe you want to color code things. I don't know, I thought that was cool, but that was me just kind of exploring. Layout. If you have multiple pages, you can add more pages, you can insert a page, you can duplicate a spread if you're working with spreads. You can print, I think, one single spread with this. I'm not quite sure, I don't really work with this. And then if you're working with an interactive document, um, page transitions, and you can choose those from there too. Margin and columns, you can change your margins and columns, ruler guides. Um, you can change the color of it, like let's say maybe you can't really see the cyan on your screen, um, maybe you want it dark blue. So now when I select OK and bring across the guide, it is now blue instead of cyan, even though cyan is a lighter color blue, but uh, it can be any color. Um, same thing with create guides, you can create the number of rows and the number of columns and the gutter space between them and you can preview it so that's what it'll look like like so on your document and then you can select OK. Helpful if you're making like a trifold brochure document. I should have done that when I made my cabin brochure but uh, yeah so that, that's how you do it. The type menu. Let's see, am I missing anything? No. Type menu. Let's move on. Type menu. You can change your font directly from this menu. You can just go to type font and if you have your font selected and then you can just simply uh, choose the font you're looking for. I personally use the palette which is under window and types and table and I go to the character palette and I select my text and get my palette open and I change from here. I mean Virtually in design, there's like three or four different ways to do one thing. Um, you just need to do whatever you want to do. 
Same thing with changing the font size. I mean, you can change it from the character palette itself. You can change it from the, um, the, the control bar here at the top. Again, three or four different ways to do it. Choose whatever works for you. Um, this is where you can get your, change your tabs for your paragraphs. I have no idea how to really use this, but um, check out Adobe's help site to learn more about tabs. Um, story mode thing. Again, you can open up your character palettes from the type menu. You can open it from the window menu. I mean, it's really now interchangeable, I guess, um, in terms of user interface, but yeah. <clears throat> type on a path. Um, you can change your options once you have a type on, type on a path. You can change your options and whatnot. You can add notes. You can go to note mode and add a note and type in a note. That was from my last video, I believe, or one of these future videos. Um, you can track changes if you're working in a group by other with other people. Um, you can go ahead and track changes, create hyperlinks. Um, this is where you can go to your bullets. So if you have a paragraph or something, you can apply bullets or numbers. Um, if you need to insert a special character or white space or a character break, um, this is where you go. Object menu. This is cool. You can transform your shapes. You can move them. You can scale them. You can rotate them. You can shear them. You can rotate them clockwise, counterclockwise, 90 degrees, 180 degrees. You can flip them horizontal, vertical, any way, which way you want to go. And if you need to do that for multiple things, you use the transform again menu option. So like, let's say, let me close this real quick. Let's say I want to take these two things right here, this, this white square and black square, and I want to transform them and I want to shear them. Again, you can use the tool in the toolbox or you can use this option and maybe I want to shear them 30 degrees. Let me uncheck. So maybe I want to shear them like so and I'm going to select OK. So the, that's what the one of the transformation tools um, does. You can insert in HTML. I have no idea what that is. You can even generate your own QR code. I thought that was cool. Um, especially if you're working in a document and you need a QR code for something you can simply insert in one right here and make your own, which is really cool. Text frame options. Um, you can change your text frame options, um, basically changing like maybe paragraph styles of it. Um, so that's text frame options. Um, fitting your content to your frame. I showed that in a previous video. Um, fit, filling your frame proportionally, fitting your content proportionally, so on and so forth content frames you can assign it as a graphic frame or a text frame or even an assigned effects this is the fun part so um, I'm actually going to do a ghosting effect it's that's what I'm going to show you with the effects menu um, there's so many other things you can do with the effects menu but I thought I'd show you a basic uh, ghosting text box text box effect so um, I'm going to go ahead and select my white uh, box I already have made here. And I'm going to go to effects and I want to apply a basic feather. Now with this basic feather, let me zoom out. Now with this basic feather, I'm just going to maybe play with it just a little bit and maybe change the transparency, its opacity to maybe 60% or so, like so, and then I'm going to select OK. So there's one thing. Now I'm going to select these two things here, and I'm going to actually show you the Align palette. Of course, you can align directly from the ob... Uh, I believe it's... Arrange, Select... Well, it's from the Align palette and uh, that's under the window options and I think it's under I don't know where it is but arrange no anyways I have the align palette here and I'm just going to align these two things up 
um, in the center. And then I'm gonna add my text on top. And let me align this a little bit better. Maybe I wanna change my text color. Whoops, whoops. Text, there we go. Maybe I want it blue. And maybe I want an outline on it. Maybe I want green or something. Change the point to like three or something. Um, so there you go. There's there's one way to transform your objects, like so. Um, that was really quick, I know, but play with your options there. Corner options. You can change your corner options on a rectangle or any type of shape. You can change the corner options. So maybe I want instead of pointy maybe I want fancy and uh, maybe I really want fancy fancy corners there boom there's there's my fancy ghost box effect there so something like that that's corner options and effects so there's many other effects to choose from as well just go through them there's there's so many um, captions, um, you can add captions underneath pictures, I'm not quite sure how that works. Clipping path, um, that's creating something, I don't quite remember. But yeah, that's clipping, clipping path. I know how to do it, I know how to use it, I just can't remember what it does. I went back and reminded myself that clipping paths crop part of the artwork so that a position of your artwork appears through the shape or shapes that you create. You can create clipping paths to hide unwanted parts of an image, creating both a path for the image and a frame for the graphic. By keeping the clipping path and graphics frame separate, you can freely move or freely modify the clipping path without affecting the graphics frame by using the direct selection tool and other drawing tools in the toolbox. So that's I brought this up from Adobe's website just as a quick refresher, so let's get started in design. Um, so I have some text and an image. I have the Indian head here. Um, but as you can see, there's a white box around the image itself. It is not a PNG. It doesn't have a transparent background. Um, so if I were to place it with text, of course, I'm going to have to text wrap. So, um... I can just select the text in the image and go over here to the quick option here in the panel bar and I'm going to select wrap around object shape here. And, and now as you can see, um, as I move this image, like so, the text will wrap around the box. But as you can see, there's a lot of white space and sometimes you don't want that. That's where a clipping path comes into play. So I'm going to select this image here and I'm going to go to the object menu and I'm going to go to clipping path and go to options. Now let's go to type detect edges. So here I'm going to zoom in here just a little bit so you can see. And then I'm going to hit the preview button. Notice how InDesign determines where those edges are in the image. So and it gets rid of the white background which is cool which is what you want. So now all I'm gonna do is select OK and I can freely, whoops, let me deselect here. And then I can freely move, wrong arrow. I can freely move my Indian head. I might need to adjust a few things to um, fix the text. But as you can see, no matter where I place it, because of the text wrapping, um, it should um, wrap around it accordingly. Well, it won't because it doesn't have the background, but um, so that's, that's what, where the clipping path comes into play. So you can free up some of that white space and um, um, really make your images closer to your text and whatnot so i thought i'd interrupt this video put this little quick little video in here and um demonstrate the clipping path. this is where you go to your pdf options um for your interactive documents paths you can join paths together and whatnot with the path same with the pathfinder you can add or subtract from shapes and 
really mess with shapes and make them really personalized and customized. You can convert circles or something into another shape. So like, let's say maybe I don't want this, this circle here, this circle here to be a circle. Maybe I want it to be a triangle instead. So I can go to convert shape, go to triangle, and now it is a triangle. So that's that's converting your shapes and objects. It works with text boxes and uh, photo frames as well. Convert point. Um, you need your direct selection tool. Select it. Select a, um, a point on your shape, a handle on your shape, and then simply go to object, convert point, and maybe you want smooth. So maybe maybe I wanted a smooth, the rounded triangle. So then I do the same for the other corners as well. But yeah, moving on. Uh, table. I thought this was a great time to go to Adobe's website. I have no idea how to use the table feature. I mean, it works similar to Excel and Google Document stuff, but I really didn't feel like doing that. So I thought I'd bring up the help site again. So helpx.adobe.com. So there it is, helpx.adobe.com. And this is their website. This is what, what you can go to. And um, they have help for mainly all their products and um, their services as well that they also provide, not just their uh, software products. Um, but yeah, this is where you go for InDesign help, Illustrator help, Photoshop, and Lightroom. I highly recommend this website um, because it's their own website for their products, like their help sites. Just ooh. anyways. Um, you go to the search bar, I'm going to type in tables in design, and I'm going to select search here, and it should come up, first link should be create table in Adobe InDesign. Here it is. Usually sometimes they have videos or step-by-step, -step. looks like this one is a step-by-step, -step. so just follow the steps. Now if you're a person that doesn't like to follow steps in writing and you like to watch a video, go ahead, go to YouTube, type in how to create tables in design, something like that, and find a video, find someone that you like, and um, watch that video. Really helpful. So, let's get back here. Uh, view. The view menu, you can view your document. Um, um, you can proof your document, you can proof the colors, like so this is, if this were to be printed, it would look something like that. Uh, yeah, uh, zoom in, command equal, zoom out, command minus, fit your page in the window, command zero, command one to fit the whole document uh, within the window, kind of, uh, which is uh, actual size, excuse me. Um, you can rotate your spread, screen mode, um, you can view it normally, you can preview it, like as if it were um, going to be printed. So, actually let me close that. There we go, so that's what it kind of looked like if without all the guides and grids. Um, you can change it to presentation mode, so we have a presentation. Boom, there you go. And I don't know how to get out of here. Okay, there we go, cool. Um, cool, display performance. Um, depending on your computer, um, usually you can view your document at typical display or fast display, a lo little lower quality, but it works. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go back to typical. There we go. Uh, you can hide your rulers, but personally I like them on and showing, so Command R, Control R on Windows. Extras, I have no idea what that does. Guides and Grids. You can show them, you can hide them, you can lock them. You can snap your items, your objects to them. You can have smart guides and those show up as you're dragging objects. And um, yeah, so really cool. So that's basically all the menus here. Window, you can arrange your windows if you have multiple windows options. So maybe you want to tile them. Maybe, maybe you want to float in a window instead of within the frame or something. Um, so maybe something, maybe a little window like this. I'm actually going to bring it back in. So that's how you bring in and out windows. So you can simply drag the tab out, bring it in like so. Workspace, this is where you can change your workspace. Let me zoom in here. 
This is where you can change your workspace. So maybe if you're making a book, maybe you go with book. Maybe if you're working with a digital published item, maybe you want to go with that workspace. Interactive PDFs, click that one. Typography, click that one. If you need to, you can reset them. You can even make your own workspace um, like so. So, And then the rest, the floating palettes, the other options. Um, color, you can open up the color swatch like so and yeah I mean this is where you get all your other palettes layers working with layers so I personally use color I use the layers option I use the character and the paragraph option so I'm gonna open this up I'm actually gonna save this as my workspace just 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 to show you oops I didn't want to do that just to show you how I would mainly set up my workspace I want swatches. Swatches. Stroke. There we go. So there's one color palette there. I call that my color palette. I have my character palette, and then I have my layers. Now, if I had a bigger screen, of course, I would float them like this, and that'd be my workspace. Now, if I wanted to save it, just simply go to workspace and then uh, hit new workspace you can name this i'm going to name this as michael's workspace cool beans and it'll capture where your panels are opened and if you made any menu customizations as well select okay now this is my workspace now if i wanted to revert back to the essentials or something i can just simply click the essentials it'll bring everything back in no maybe not let me reset essentials there we go. So to put everything back, and then if I wanted my workspace open, just simply go to the corner here, select your workspace, and there you go. That's how you uh, save and change workspaces. Uh, and then the help, you can search. You can go to InDesign Help, um, click it. it. Should launch a web browser and take you to the help site. And um, So yeah, those are the file menus. Hope this video was informative for you. And as always, thank you for viewing. See you next time.